Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Welcome to Transformation Talk Radio. For those of you out there, you're probably listening to TransformationRadio.fm as we begin the launch. That's what I like to say, begin the launch. Yeah, it's really kind of exciting to just see how we get to show up in the world. And for those of you out there, uh, we've gotten all of your feedback about uh, the websites, transformationradio.fm, and we're making changes as we speak. But part of that is so that we can simplify things uh, so all y'all can just click on a button and there we are. And we want to thank you all for uh, providing us with feedback. And by the way, for those of you that are thinking, I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah, just shoot us an email if you go to transformationradio.fm just shoot us an email and say hey really like this don't like this so much and we will do our best to change it you can send that email to info i n f as in frank o like information info at the t-h-e dr d-r pat p-a-t show dot com uh today we've got two hours of amazing amazing radio and what I love about these two hours we have planned for you is this is about what I love to think about and have talked about many many times how we look at life and if we're really looking at whether or not we want to show up in the world as winning and what that means for me is it doesn't mean like the football winning But are we contributing to the world to make this a better place? Are we doing that? Or are we just kind of hanging out and saying, you know what, I think I've done enough. I don't think I have much to contribute. But part of that is how we show up from a sacred point of view, how we show up. And that is another one of those words that we're going to talk about today. But, you know, we're here to experience a level of of being that is, some people say, caught between the realm of science and spirituality. Some folks would say it's not caught between anything. It's about the spirituality, but we just have to be living in this earth skin to get through it. Today, we get to talk with Starhawk about the fifth sacred thing. And what does that mean, the fifth sacred thing? Starhawk is the author of The Fifth Sacred Thing and many other books. I think we're kind of looking at about 12 of them, so to speak. But today, it's about what this means to take a look at where we've been, what we've done, and say, I think it's time to maybe do it again, but do it a little differently. 25 years after its release, right? Classic, yes, classic, fifth sacred thing. Now we're talking about an audio book. Uh, Starhawk, great to have you here. 25 years. I got to, first of all, welcome to the show. Let's start there. Well, thanks, Dr. Pat. It's great to be on again. I've been um, really a fan of your approach to encouraging people to really show up fully at this time in mm-hmm. history and this time in our lives. You know, I love that you decided to take something that was so absolutely epic 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, my language, maybe give it a little facelift. And what I mean by that is 
bringing it to the world in a new way. Can you just share a little bit about the energy that you tapped into to call this forth now? Well, The Fifth Sacred Thing was a novel, is a novel I wrote uh, that came out 25 years ago. But in some ways, I feel like it's almost more relevant now than it was then. It looks at, into a future uh, and really poses two different visions of the future. You know, one where we go further in the direction of discrimination and power over and militarism and violence and the other where we actually realize some of these ideals that we talk about around personal transformation and social transformation and build a world that's in harmony with nature and where people really have a strong commitment to valuing the sacred in every human being. Um, in the novel really centers around what happens when those two systems clash mm. and how a peaceful society can defend itself against violence without becoming what it's fighting against. And uh, over the years, I've gotten just so much positive feedback from people about how much the book meant to them. Um, about five years ago, I got a real call to actually write a sequel. So I have a sequel called City of Refuge, uh, which takes the story further and deeper, and which came out last year. And in the process of doing that, uh, I was really feeling I wanted the book to be available as an audio book as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about you, but I love audio books. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it's like having your mother read you a bedtime story for hours and hours. But, uh, you know, I listen to them while I'm driving. I listen to them while I'm working. And I always tell people a good audio book will get you through a time of stress better than meditation. Yeah. When what you need to do is counter those voices in your head. So we were finally, uh, we never were able to get the publisher to do an audio book. Um, but finally, uh, Maya Lilly, who is a wonderful, wonderful actor and producer, we've been working for many years around bringing these stories to the screen. And uh, she said, why don't we just do it? She is huh. uh, a beautiful voice actor and really brought the characters alive. It was a, a wonderful experience to work with her on this. Well, isn't it interesting that we are talking about this? Because, you know, for... Um, for 14 years, and this is, you know, what we're talking about here, for 14 years, you know, we had an idea that this digital world, and I don't know if you can remember back 14 years, but we were not like clicking on radio or audiobooks, right? Right, yeah. Right, right. But, you know, we had a sense that this was going to be something important. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you know this, but you know, now you have one of the fastest growing groups of people that literally do this are moms. 92% of all moms, you know, connect via their smartphones. Mm -hmm. uh, they carry it with them and they listen. I want to ask you about this and about the book and about the audio version of the book. What is the vibration? What is the energy that's being called forth here now on the planet? Well, I think we're at this, you know, tremendously exciting time on the planet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where there is so much at stake. You know, we have these two great crises, the crisis mm -hmm. of climate change and environmental degradation and the crisis of this concentration of wealth and power in fewer mm -hmm. and fewer hands. And... Um, actually, those are the same crisis. <laughs> They're not separate. Right. And at the same time, we actually know the counter to both of them. I think of climate change not just as carbon numbers, but I think you have to look at it as um, large-scale <laughs> environmental degradation. Mm -hmm. And the counter to that has to be large-scale, massive environmental regeneration. Mm. Among other things, I also teach and train people in permaculture design, which is 
ecological design and we know that we have the solutions. We actually have the ability to regenerate landscape on a large scale, which is tremendously exciting. Um, And we have so many people out there who are working on so many positive directions from farming and gardening and food growing and social justice directions to personal transformation, personal growth. So it's like we have all the tools and all the skills that we need to make this transformation. And we know that the transformation we need to make is actually like a nice thing, (laughs) you know, to counter climate change. It's not like we have to like oppress people or destroy (laughs) something, you know, it's like the opposite. Like what we need to do is uh, we need to turn away from dirty, nasty, polluting, harmful sources of energy to clean, renewable sources. We need to turn away from poisoning our food and destroying the life in the soil to building healthy soil, which actually sequesters carbon, takes it out of the atmosphere, uh, which will make our food healthier and uh, all of us healthier. Uh, We need to turn away from a world where we just roam the globe in search of the cheapest labor and the most lax environmental standards and relocalize things, reroute in our communities, rebuild community. Um, we're actually looking at a transformation to a world which I think will be healthier and more fulfilling and more satisfying and put people deeper in touch with the real sources of pleasure and joy and fulfillment in their lives. Um, so where's the problem? <laughs> right? yeah. We just need to do it. Um, yeah. we, you know, there are big forces countering that and it's kind of like the dinosaurs <laughs> digging in their claws saying, no, we're not going away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, again, I feel like it's a moment in time when we are each called to step up as mm-hmm. fully as we can into our own um personal beauty and sacredness and calling in order to make this transformation happen. You know, I love this topic. And when we come back, I want to talk more about it. And I want to talk more about, you know, what the audio book brings forth as well as, you know, call to action, so to speak. You know, there was no mistake that we decided to call this the Transformation Network. Transformation Talk Radio was our first channel. Now we're launching TransformationRadio.fm, which will have 10 unique channels. And people said to us, and maybe you can talk about this, they said, Pat, out of all of the things you guys could have called the network, Mm -hmm. why did you call it that? Why did you call it the Transformation Network? Why did you call it Transformation Radio? You know, you could have called it blah, blah, blah. Well, I just heard you use the word transformation close to 10 times because (laughs) it has a vibration. When we come Uh back, we're going to ask our hawk about what is that vibration and why is it a call to action for everyone? Why is it when we say the word change, we get scared, but we say the word transformation and we're ready to sign up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation. 
Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com. Would you like to experience life-transforming adventures in personal expansion and world service? If you do, tune in to learn about magical innate abilities that you can develop and use to make your dreams come true. Joy Elaine is author of The Joy Chronicles, and she's inviting you and millions of others to join her in working with galactic masters, angels, and the Ashtar Command as they assist humanity and planet Earth to achieve their ultimate destination of ascension. For more information about this upcoming event and broadcast, visit joyelaine.com. That's joy, E-L-A-I-N-E, dot com. Tune in to The Michael Shane Show the third Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com and connect with the ascended beings to raise your vibration and manifest the life you desire. Get ready to receive healing through the transphysical mediumship of Reverend Michael Shane and the ascended beings. Visit MichaelShane.com. That's M-Y-C-H-A-E-L, Shane.com, and call 425-971-6632 to schedule your full healing session now. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world. And she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangel, from the Ascended Masters, from the light beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed, and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat. I'm joined here today by, I'll tell you what, you know, you, you can say the word visionary, but then you actually look at the people that actually are visionaries. And that's how we get to Starhawk, because what we're talking about is somebody 25 years ago released a book, The Fifth Sacred Thing. Now, uh, Starhawk is releasing the audio book. Because the audiobook is the way we roll these days. Mm-hmm. You know, we take them, we put them in the car. We now have teeny weeny teeny devices now. Uh, who knew? Who knew? Well, somebody knew. We knew actually. Um, and we're going to be able to tell you about what this. You know, how you can get your own copy. But think about this. You know, today Starhawk's going to talk about the making of this beloved urban fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't that the coolest thing to say? Before we jump ahead, um, would you mind letting folks know, first of all, how they can find out more about you, uh, how they can get a copy of the book, the audio book, and any of your other books, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, You can find out about me at my website, which is starhawk.org. I also have an author page on Facebook, uh, which is starhawk, all one word. And you can like that. And uh, then in the mysterious wisdom of Facebook, you may occasionally get things from me. (laughs) Uh, And you can get the audio book online on uh, Amazon, on iTunes, on uh, audible.com. You can get all of my books uh, through my website or through Amazon or other online booksellers or through your local independent bookstore. Mm. Uh, including the latest one, City of Refuge, which is actually the sequel to The Fifth Sacred Thing. 
And that, again, is available in online ways, and your local bookstore can order that also for you. Awesome. Uh, you know, I, we, you and I were talking during the break, and I was kind of sharing a little story with you. And <laughs> I, and the, we were talking about transformation. And interesting, I had somebody contact me over the weekend and talk with me about why we named the network. I, you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of like, uh, and and I basically said, I, I don't think you listen to any of the shows, right? And they mm-hmm. want to know transformation. Why the name transformation? Where'd you get that from? You know, and basically, it is the word of the decade, I believe, mm-hmm. transformation, you know, in a lot of ways. But you also are talking about it from this place of not just spirituality, earth-based spirituality tell us a little bit about the book and about how transformation shows up for the characters without giving us giving everybody the whole thing because i actually have the audiobook so i don't want to give out the whole story (laughs) (laughs) well i think in any novel it really centers around characters who in some ways trans either transform which to me means change in the direction of growth and evolution uh, or don't transform uh, when you have tragedies and depressing books but I actually prefer transformation (laughs) Uh, in the fifth sacred thing you know there's three central characters there's Maya who is the old woman and the storyteller and kind of the witness of this whole stream of history from the 1950s to the 2050s. Um, There's her grandson, Bird, who's a musician but becomes a guerrilla fighter and goes down um, from Califia, from Northern California, which is the more ecotopian society. He goes down to the Southlands, uh, which have become the more militarist, brutal society in order to join the resistance. And he's imprisoned there and finally escapes to come back and warn the North that the Southlands are going to invade. Mm. And then there's Madrone, who is um, Bird's kind of longtime childhood sweetheart and also uh, the daughter of Maya's lover, or the granddaughter of Maya's lover, um, who's a healer and a very powerful healer. And the story really centers around how they respond to this invasion. How do you counter violence? And what kinds of choices do you have to make? Um, The city in the north decides to adopt a strategy of nonviolent resistance Mm -hmm. and to really say to the invaders, there's a place for you at our table if you will choose to join us. Mm -hmm. And... Um, So you see how that plays out for Bird and the sacrifices and the compromises that he's pushed into making. Um, For Madrone as a healer, you really see her struggle with something I think all of us struggle with as women, you know, which is how do we give all the things that we're called upon to give Mm -hmm. uh, and still hold on to something for ourselves and still hold on to some nucleus of who we are. Uh, And you see Maya as she watches it all from the perspective of an elder and um, tries to find what is her role as a woman who now is almost 100 years old. Mm. Mm. Um, You know, in the sequel, in City of Refuge, the story goes down to the Southlands and Bird and Madrone... Uh, are called Madrone has a dream uh, which actually really came to me as a dream Mm -hmm. when I was contemplating writing the book and thinking about well how do you liberate people who don't have any concept of liberation and she's told um, every city needs three things a plaza, a hearth and a sacred tree so build a city of refuge in the heartland of the enemy And in some ways, I think that's part of the work we're all called to do in these times Mm -hmm. is, you know, we see so many forces of pain and hurt and violence and destruction around us. How do we build a nucleus of this transformation? I believe people need to have a a positive vision Mm 
mm-hmm. in order to know what to work towards. Uh, a lot of politics and activism and everything tends to be around like doom and gloom and warnings yeah. and and you know those are real many of them they're important but I think to motivate people to actually act uh, we need to have some positive vision of what we can create some sense of hope and some sense of a destination that we want to reach mm. and for me that's very important in my writing you know, is to provide that, is to imagine that. Uh, in some sense, it's a magical teaching, uh, teaching of, that comes out of earth-based spirituality yeah. that says, you know, if you want to create something, you first have to envision it and imagine it, and you have to imagine it in its positive form. You know, if you want a, a love in your life, you can't sort of say, dear goddess Aphrodite and all the great forces of the universe don't send me another rotten lover like the one right, I just right, right, right because then what's in your mind is that negative pattern and that's what you call forth so you have to imagine that different pattern yeah. you have to imagine the qualities as you were saying about the word transformation right. the kind of energy the vibration and put that forward yeah. And call that forth. I love this story. It's so beautiful. I love this. And I have to say that for me, it's very, very relevant to the day and age we're living in. Because mm-hmm. we're living in a time that reminds me of when I was younger, like in my, you know, like mm-hmm. 17-ish, where I was out there, you know, marching and protesting, whatever you want to call it. You know, bra burning. Yes, mm-hmm. that really did happen. That's not a joke. But, you know, doing it because there was a need to do it. We are living in a time where there is a need, maybe not to do that because, you know, a lot of women, they're not wearing the bras anymore. That's progressive (laughs) in itself, right? But we're living in a time now where embracing transformation Mm -hmm. is the new energy, You know, when we come back, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the message in the book, but also want to talk about this idea of what we're being called. Each of us has the talent, what we're being called to show up as right now. Mm -hmm. And I love this because part of the energy is we have to be the transformation in order to call it. When we come back, we're going to talk about this. We actually have a copy. We have actually an audio book to give away. This and much more. We will remind you again how to find out more about Starhawk. What do you do to move beyond challenges? We'll be right back. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com. Calling all Intuits, healers, and readers, you are invited to the Women of Wisdom Fall Festival. Join us as we celebrate the bounty of our Mother Earth on October 1st at North Seattle Community College. We're looking for a variety of practitioners and experts in the art of energy healings, intuitive readings, and body work. If you are a reader, healer, or an artisan selling handmade arts and crafts, we invite you to share your gifts with the Women of Wisdom community. Go to womenofwisdom.org to apply. 
Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Yeah, man. So we back in the club with the bodies rocking from side to side, side, side to side. Thank God the week is done. I feel like a zombie gone back to life, back, back to life. Hands up. Yeah, suddenly we all got our hands up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Wow, I'm so thrilled to have Starhawk, uh, Starhawk joining me here today. The fifth sacred thing. Now, before we get back into talking about this fabulous, fabulous uh, audio book, you know, uh, um, we have we have ways that you all co- are going to be able to participate. And in order to do that, uh, I want to do two things. First. Can you please tell folks again how they can find you on the internet, but also on social media, uh, all of the above, if you don't mind? Yeah, uh, my website is starhawk.org, and I also have an author Facebook page that is Starhawk, all one word, and a Twitter account that is Starhawk17. Uh, and you can find the books online on Amazon. Uh, the audiobook is on audible and itunes and um you can also find the books i've written 13 so Mm -hmm. they're all on my website but they're all also available online and through your local bookstores uh who can order them if they don't have them in stock uh so it's easy to get hold of them yeah and you know uh, for those of you out there you like to google the fifth uh sacred thing go ahead and do that uh, you know, this is a tale of freedom. It's a tale of transformation, love, war, uh, kind of the things that we're talking about today. You know, we're talking about, you, you know, in, in this book, you're describing, talking about humankind. Here we are, right? 21st mm-hmm. century. We're talking about 21st century, maybe California, maybe not. But, you know, I said before the break that, uh, you know, 25 years ago, you saw the relevance of this looking forward. Here we are this day and age. Some people classify this particular year as one of the most revealing Mm -hmm. uh, years in a really long time. And of course, people point to our political infrastructure, but not just that, talking about the contrasts out in the world. And I'd love for you to talk about that. Yeah, we're. I think we're at a time where the pain and the ugliness mm-hmm. can't be hidden in the same way they used to. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know whether there's really more of it or it seems like more of it, but, you know, everybody has a camera, everybody has a cell phone, mm-hmm. everybody becomes a reporter. So you can't hide the oppression in the same way that it might have been hidden before that. And at the same time, I think that makes us maybe even more responsible 
for making sure that we also show people the vision, show people the possibilities, because it's so easy to get overwhelmed by the pain. Um, There's so much of it, and people who are sensitive and compassionate, it's very easy to just take that all in and feel like you're drowning with it. Uh, I think we have to also be showing people the hope and the vision and saying, well, look, this is how the world could be. Mm-hmm. And again, to remind people like, you know, we actually do have the tools that we need to make that world. We have the technology we need to get off fossil fuels and get onto renewables. Uh, we have the understanding we need to take carbon out of the atmosphere and turn it into living healthy soil that will improve uh, the fertility and the nutrition of all the things that we eat and the water holding capacities and regenerate landscapes and ecosystems on a large scale. We know how to do that. And so it's really a matter of finding uh, the political will and the social will to build a world of justice and balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, somebody uh, asked me the question, you know, when I said, you know, we're building a a network that's all positive talk. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. something we've been doing 14 years plus. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I said, we're not like any other network. And Mm -hmm. the individual I was talking with, you know, said to me, really? And Mm -hmm. I said, well, at least I'd like to think so. And I didn't really have a whole lot of words to describe it. Mm -hmm. Um, But you're doing this in the book and the audio book. I mean, through characters. And and I guess if I were to say, look at all the guests we have. These Mm -hmm. are the folks that really can answer that, that question. But you're really doing this for a number of reasons. And I want to ask, ask you this. Um, what is it that that you hope to have people not just think about, but perhaps transform in their own lives? Well, I always tell people, you know, often when I speak to young people, I'll say, you know, think about what is sacred to you. Sacred, not in the sense of something you bow down to, but something that you really most deeply care about. Uh, the thing that you don't want to see hurt or destroyed or damaged, uh, the thing that maybe is more important to you than your own comfort or convenience or profit, um, that's really core to your life. And if you know what that is, then figure out how do I put my life energies, my best life energies toward the service of what is sacred to me? Mm Mm-hmm. That's what I would like to see people do. And, uh, you know, for me, part of that is my writing and creating these visions and the the wonderful challenge of how do you take ideas and not just put them out as ideas, but turn them into characters and emotions and experiences that people share uh, through the writing and the novel. Um, and also through teaching, because as I said, I teach permaculture design courses, which is ecological design um, with a grounding in spirit and a focus on organizing and activism um, to give people the actual tools and skills and understandings we need to make the transformation in a practical way. Mm-hmm. Um, that for me is sort of my answer to the question, but I strongly believe everybody's going to have your own answer to that question of Mm -hmm. what is sacred and how do I best serve it and that is beautiful that we do because it's one of the ecological principles we work with a lot that diversity creates resilience Mm -hmm. you know if we're all the same and we're all doing the same thing um, that is not as resilient, that is not as rich as if we are each called to do something different in following what we're called to do. Mm. You know, I love what you said, diversity creates resilience. I would love for you to talk a little bit more about that. And the reason I would is, um, you know, if in fact we are going to um, 
to really build this level of resilience. How does diversity support that? Because it seems like an easy question to answer. Mm -hmm. However, we have almost forgotten that diversity builds resilience, right? Yes. <laughs> um, if you look at a forest, you know, like a, a natural forest, you'll see that there's not just one kind of tree in it. Uh, you might have redwood trees or cedar trees up where you are uh, that are the, the ancient old conifers and then toward the edge of the forest you might have something like madrones or you might have tan oaks or you might have um, big leaf maples you know and you've got this variety of trees and then you've got a variety of undergrowth and mm. each of them is playing their own part each of them is providing habitat uh, for different things um, if you get a disease like down where we are we have unfortunately this very terrible disease of the oaks called sudden oak death yeah. that has taken out a lot of our tan oaks and a lot of our um, other deciduous oaks um, you know that's a tragedy but if you have a diverse forest you've got other trees that fill in and maybe you've got mm -hmm. genetic diversity mm -hmm. in the variety of oaks that you have it's taken out a lot of our tan oaks but not all of our tan oaks yeah. so some of them may have resistance to that uh, if you cut down that forest and you plant a plantation of genetically identical clone dug fir mm. you might in theory get more profit from that but you have no resistance if you get a bug or you get a pest it's like they can just chomp their way through that entire forest without any kind of resilience happening. So that's how it works in an ecosystem. And I think it also works that way in human systems. You know, if we have a community that includes diversity of age, of gender, of race, of experience, of income levels, we have this tremendously wide variety of perspectives through which we can view the world. And we're much more likely to get a full, rich, uh, clear picture of what's really going on in the world than if we all think alike or we all have the same background uh, or we all have the same set of frames through which we look at everything. Wow. You know, I love that you just shared that and reminding all of us of how we got to be as resilient as we are even today. Uh, I love that you shared that because sometimes we get this thing, this temporary memory loss of how we actually got to be of great contribution in the world. Not just one person, but you know, all of us bringing our, our bringing to the table what is so unique about us all in a way that honors not just everyone but honors the journey. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back and then give a copy of the audio book away. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A -A -A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? 
Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Are you ready to tap into the healer within? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the real doctor is the source that lives within you, that heals within you minute by minute every day? The healer within is the innate intelligence of the human body. When we cut our hand with a piece of glass, we don't have to command the body to close the wound and grow new skin. It knows how to heal itself. We do have to nourish the skin by disinfecting it and remove the glass or it cannot heal. The innate healer relies upon us to assist in this healing process. Our role is to identify its needs, provide the substances required for the healing, and remove the obstacle. Contact us to achieve optimal health at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at MaryJaneMack.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Because I... Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Star Hawk joining me here today. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. We would love to give an audiobook away to the first caller. Uh, audiobook of the fifth sacred thing. This is a new audiobook from Starhawk. 1-800-930-2819. That's our toll-free number. Benny will be right there. We'll take the first caller, and off we go. Uh, Starhawk, thank you. I know we've got a few minutes left today in the show. Um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, you know, thank you for being here today. Secondly, thank you for bringing this message to the forefront again. You know, the fifth sacred thing, I'm sure people have said to you, what are the other four? <laughs> <laughs> I missed the memo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the four how do you explain are, the evolution? You know, the four are air, fire, water, earth, <laughs> the core four elements of so many different cultures and traditions. And then that fifth is that mysterious one that's so hard to name or pin down, but you might call spirit or you might call love. Yeah. Isn't that what we really do need today? You know, setting aside, you know, our B12 shot that we go get. <laughs> How about an infusion of love? Yeah. Wouldn't that be just enough to remind us of the essence of who we are? Mm hmm. Well, I often think about that. You know, you and I were talking about uh, the elections and. Yeah. The, the wish to be kind of like flash frozen and woken <laughs> up after they're over. <laughs> but I also think it's a good meditation that I encourage people to do in this time of, you know, there's so much fear around and fear being promoted uh, is to really imagine like a drain for fear in your community or in your home, kind of like, you know, water bubbling down a drain in a little vortex and mm -hmm. just imagine that draining away and 
taking the breath and really pouring out some love and thinking mm-hmm. about again the things that are sacred to you the things that you most deeply love and um this is what i do myself when the anxiety gets overwhelming is to just stop and say okay whew, i'm going to drain that away and then i'm going to focus on the things that i love and really pour out love and call forth you know the love that we have for the living earth for mm-hmm. the trees for the birds for the next generation for the wide diversity the wonderful diversity of human beings on the planet and pour that out and i think when we do that even when we take action like i'm thinking about the the sacred stone camp right now in north dakota where Native Americans have come from all over the country um, to say no to a pipeline that threatens their sacred land and their drinking water. But I think what's so inspiring to me is that in doing that, tribes that have historically been at war with each other have made peace. People have stood up in a very powerful, nonviolent way um, to say not just what they're against, but to say water is life. This is what we're for. This is what we're reminding everybody of. And to me, when you can do that, even in the context of having to stand against some of the destruction, then we're pulling forth again that love, that positive energy um, that I think is a very, very powerful force. Yeah. I I mean, it is really for me. um, I wake up some days and I, I do believe that I have moments of, uh, uh, of a recollection of a past that mm-hmm. wasn't so positive for myself. Mm-hmm. And I moved to such an enormous place of gratitude. Mm. Uh, I want to ask you this. In, in the book, in the work you do, what role might gratitude play as we move forward? You know, one of the other books I've written is a book called The Empowerment Manual, A Guide for Collaborative Groups, uh, which is really about some of the tools we can use to work together more effectively. Mm -hmm. And one of the places there I talk about gratitude, you know, I think gratitude is a great counter to those moments of resentment and self-pity we all get sucked into. And oftentimes one of the things that makes it so hard to work together is we're all coming from those wounded places. So when we can stop and really focus on that gratitude, um, it really shifts. I think it shifts our internal state. I think it shifts our like biophysical state. Mm -hmm. Um, And it makes us, again, aware um, of those things in the world that we most deeply love. Mm-hmm. And again, when we attune to that kind of energy, I think we generate forth positive energies, including the energies we might need to transform a situation that's making us feel oh. you know, bad. <laughs> right. Wow. Well, thank you. Uh, listen, you and I could talk forever. Thank you so much for today. One more time, please give everyone uh, your website. And uh, if you would, do you have a personal message for us today? Sure. Uh, my website is starhawk.org. I'm also on Facebook as Starhawk, one word, and Twitter, Starhawk17. Uh, our permaculture courses and trainings that we do, we've got upcoming trainings in social permaculture and group dynamics down in Southern California and we'll have in January a full permaculture design course. You can find them on my website or at earthactivisttraining.org and my message again is think about what is sacred to you. Um, Think about what you most deeply care about Yeah, and figure out how to put your life energies at its service. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. And guess what? We've got another hour coming up. Following suit, we're going to talk about brilliance. Thank you, Starhawk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pat. All right. We're going to take a shorty. We'll be right back.
The preceding audio was via a Skype call.